John Lashton and over the last 15 years I've dedicated my working career to creating habitats for wildlife. Now one of the most common questions I get asked all the time on social media or uh, across YouTube is what is the single most important habitat I can put into my garden if I want to encourage wildlife into it? And my answer is always the same and it always has been, always will be and that of course is a wildlife pond. Now these are an absolute vital source for so much life and they're one that really has declined in such an enormous amount over the last few decades uh, in, to, the, to the number of maybe a million or so ponds which is a phenomenal amount of habitat that's been lost. Now for those of us lucky enough to have a garden of course you can look to install a wildlife pond you know in, in the sunny spot within the centre of the garden there's one in, in the garden behind me here right in the middle of the garden and I think they're a great focal point you know people tend to say oh we'll tuck the pond away in the corner of the garden however they do need a reasonable amount of sunlight to thrive and why not make them a focal point you know if in my eyes if you've got dragonflies damselflies frogs newts toads you know all this life going on at the epicenter of a garden what more could you want for uh, an environment to bring kids up in for example or just to sit and observe on a summer's day now for those of us that have a garden that's great however for those of you that may have just a balcony or a very small courtyard or a rented property then there is another option and as you've guessed to my left here is a little barrel pond or a wildlife barrel as I like to call them. Now these are fantastic and they're fairly readily available online you can get them from uh, most garden centres or there's a lot of places that will just sell these nowadays and I picked this one up last week for about £35 to, to £40 with the delivery. So they are a great little resource for wildlife and one that of course you can take with you if you do move house. And they're very easy to, uh, to attract wildlife or they're great for attracting wildlife. So let's have a look now at how we can uh, look to turn this once used whiskey barrel into a little habitat for wildlife. So once you've got your barrel and this one here that I've got is about 60 centimetres or two foot across by about 45 centimetres or 18 inches deep uh, it's time to start thinking about what plants you're going to plant in it now I'm going to plant plants in baskets purely because if I add soil and then try and plant into the soil inevitably it will uh, rot the timber in time so the best thing to do is get some baskets now these can be any size as long as they're four to five inches deep uh, or six inches deep doesn't really matter uh, it'll just give the plants enough room to spread their roots and establish nicely now the plants that you look into or are looking to plant in your pond uh, can be really divided into four categories. Now the first ones are the emergent vegetation. So these are things like your irises or your rushes, things that the uh, dragonflies and uh, damselfly nymphs are going to want to use to crawl up as their nymph form, crawl up the stem and then hatch out into the adult form of those insects. So that's the first category. The second one is your floating leaf plants. So things such as your lilies, uh, in the wildlife ponds that I build they are usually things such as broadleaf pondweed, uh, fringe water lily and that sort of thing and these are great because they just help keep the water that bit cooler. Uh, many people have issues with blanket weed and this is usually because it's either quite a shallow pond or they've not got any sort of floating leaf plants which of course just shade the water out, keep the sunlight uh, levels down to a minimum in the water and just brings that water temperature down so it uh, just discourages blanket weed so and if you are doing a wildlife pond I'd aim for a 60 to 70 percent surface water surface coverage of these types of plant. Now the third category that we're going to talk about are your oxygenators probably the most crucial category if you like because they're going to be the plants that stop your water going stagnant and really give the pond some life. Many people come to me and say well I want a wildlife pond but I don't want the hassle of a pump or you know electric and running that into the garden. <coughs> well with these plants you don't need any of that and all of the wildlife ponds that I design and build are uh, actually pump free so they are great because they can uh, obviously self-sustain, they are self-sustaining and um, the, you know the oxygenating plants such as your spiked water mill for the hornwort, um, these are things that are going to really pump oxygen into the water and you can physically see them fizzing uh, on a hot summer's day when they're in, in full flow. So a great plant and one that every pond should need. 
Um, and the final category is your kind of your marginal plants, so things that are going to grow in really wet conditions around the edge of the pond. Now in a pond setting it'll be things like purple loosestrife, uh, cuckoo flower, water mint, water ravens, all those kind of things. And, and things like the water mint and brook lime are, are good, are really good to put in a pond because they're great for newts. Now in this situation, because it's a barrel, unless you create some uh, sort of stones and rocks and things up the side of it for amphibians to get in and out, of course it's going to be difficult for newts and frogs to use this pond. Uh, but of course if they can get into it, they will use it. But the, the water mint and the brookline, as I say, are good plants because newts actually have this habit of uh, the females, they lay their eggs on a leaf and then actually fold the leaf over. It's quite fantastic if you ever see them doing it. Uh, but of course they like to do that to protect their, their eggs. So this soft vegetation around the margins of the pond is really good for that. So if we, we've spoken about the plants now, so let's take a look at some baskets and the plants that I'm going to plant today and uh, start planting. So we're going to start with the bigger of the two baskets that I've got. As you can see this one, a bit of sort of kidney shape and uh, this is going to be towards the back of the pond and this is going to hold the, the bigger plants. So things such as this fantastic iris versicolor which I'm going to put in the, the middle of the basket which will get to about two feet tall. Um, they have a bit of a variety of colours, some of them slightly more maroon, some of them more purple, uh, but another great one and um, that's going to go in the middle of the basket. Then we're going to have the fibre optic plant which is a fantastic little plant and as you can see, um, I'll put a close up of this in the video, it's got these lovely little sort of mini white flowers on the ends of the stems which are a really great, uh, you know, give it a real name, it's got such a character. So that'll go to one side. Uh, and then thirdly I've got these two little flowering rush plugs, which, uh, yeah, flowering rush is a fantastic, it's lovely wild, native wildflower, which is not actually a rush, it's actually in a family of its own. It has these lovely pink and sort of maroon uh, coloured flowers July time, and they'll be uh, a great one to add uh, for attracting insects. So I'm going to get these in their positions now. I've put a little bit of compost in the bottom and it's important to note as well um, when you do do a, a wildlife pond or a wildlife barrel, um, if you're planting in any baskets do use aquatic compost, um, it's just better for the plants. So I've put a bit in the bottom, now you want to aim to get your plants about, finish them maybe about an inch below the, the top of the, the basket just because we then want to add a layer of grit over the soil so that uh, it just stops any of that compost flowing away and uh, ending up in the, the bottom of your, your barrel pond. These two little plugs be a little bit more delicate with these. I just need a bit more compost underneath them. fill in round your plants. Make sure you firm round the plants as well, just so there's good contact with the roots. In a minute we'll talk about bricks as well because you're going to need a few bricks to actually raise your plants off the bottom of the, the barrel. Um, things like these emergent vegetation plants are going to want to be usually between uh, sort of 0 to 4 inches or 10 centimetres below the surface of the water at a maximum. Things like your lilies of course will happily grow lower down so they're fine at the bottom of the barrel but these plants will want to be nearer the surface so that they can actually reach the air before they've put on too much growth. I think that's about it. 
Okay, so now it's time to get some grit. Now what I've got here is some 6mm grit, or you can use gravel, uh, slightly bigger gravel as well. And as I say, this is just good because it just keeps the compost within the basket, stops it from floating around your barrel. Same with a wildlife pond as well, if you are putting any baskets in your wildlife pond, it's good to put a bit of grit around. There you have it, one basket done. So we'll get the other basket now and we'll look at the, uh, the lily that we're going to put in that one. So I've got my basket full of lily. This one's about four inches deep, which should be fine for the, the actual variety that I'm planting today, which is part of the nymphae family. Uh, and the variety is Chromatella, which is a lovely sort of creamy yellow flower uh, around sort of July time. And it's good because it's part of the dwarf family of um, which is good for a barrel pond setting because of course they won't get too big. Now in a pond you can look for bigger versions, things such as you know, Candida which will create a fantastic uh, you know, sort of spray of leaves but uh, it's, it's best if you can for a barrel pond to get a, a dwarf variety and again the fringe water lily that I spoke of earlier is another good one for this situation. Now this one has arrived in bare root form as you can see it's very much ready for, for potting on so I'm going to pop a bit of compost in the bottom of this basket. Make sure all the roots are in. And then fill in around it. Love that sound of the great tits. They're actually nesting in the box just to my right at the moment. In the last couple of days, I've just heard the the very soft, faint cheeping of the chicks, which have only just hatched in the last two or three days. And usually that's the adult calling to them to let them know that they are coming with food. So back to the basket, you can see I've left a little bit of a little bit of a gap just to get some grit on again, just to stop that saw from floating away. Just infill now with some of the grit. And that's ready for the pond. Okay, so now the baskets are ready, it's time to get them at the right height for their finished level, if you like, in the barrel. And to do this, I'm just using a couple of good old house bricks. And this one I'm actually doing at three high. I've already tested the height now. But uh, the best thing is just to do this, of course, before you have the water. It gets a bit tricky once the water's in, but if you kind of do a test run first. So that's my three bricks, just two little tiers if you like. And that's that basket with the taller vegetation is going to sit nicely at the back of the barrel. So the sun mostly will come in when it moves around to the front where the lower growing vegetation is going to be. And that's nice, that sits now two to three inches below the top of the bowel. And as I say, these plants in this particular basket, the iris, the flowering rush and the fiber optic plant, uh, they're not going to want to be more than sort of, you know, one to 10 centimeters deep in the water. So near the surface is absolutely fine. Lily, of course, is, is uh, absolutely fine at the bottom of the barrel pond. That can go straight in. And some of them will actually grow two to three feet from the base of a water body. So if you've got a wildlife pond, uh, you know, these will go near the bottom. So that's it, that's all set up. Time to add the water. So now that the water's up to level, um, and I should point out firstly that if you get a barrel, when you do get a barrel, it, sometimes it's best to just sort of fill it first with water because sometimes because they've not held any water in for a while, they can sort of shrink a little bit and therefore they're not 100% watertight. So sometimes you need to let them swell up before you can actually finish to your final level. Now as you can see, the water level now is just a couple of inches below the top of the barrel, which is perfect. Uh, the baskets are sitting nicely. 
and there's just a couple more jobs left to do. One is to just put twofold really this is a little perch in for the birds just to sit on and to enable them to drink and bathe from. This is a great little feature for the barrel. But also it enables smaller creatures that actually do drop into the water to, to climb out and dry out of course. Any uh, sort of bees, bumblebees are uh, a bit clumsy this time of year so they, they do actually drink from the a water source. So if you give them that chance to be able to crawl out and dry out obviously they stand a better chance if they do drop in. Uh, and the last job which is probably the most important and the best best of all in my eyes adding the uh, the hornwort which is uh, again you can see it's fantastic dark green oxygenating plant which can literally just be placed in the water in the winter time it'll sink down uh, and it'll come back up again in the spring and I've got some here that I've fished out from the other pond in the middle of the garden and that'll go just nicely in there and start working straight away and while I was fishing out some of this from the other pond I actually managed to grab a few of these little pond snails which are great so they're going to go in and kick start the population in here there's a few little uh, damselfly nymphs as well which came out in the net so I'm sure they will enjoy the new home fantastic little ram's horn snail there as well and there you have it your very own little wildlife barrel or wildlife pond